A few years ago, there's this photographer, Chris Jordan, that published some pictures that went kind of viral on the internet of lace and albatross from Atoll Islands with body cavities that were completely full of plastic. These birds were actually albatross chicks. It just seemed like the plastic was kind of exploding from the inside out. A few months ago, I actually started working on plastic ingestion by seabirds and I was just directly confronted to this issue. So I'd like to give you my side of the story. So in the summer of 2016, I was hired to work as a research assistant on a Canadian icebreaker. And the project that I was working on on this boat had actually nothing to do with birds or plastic. I was actually working on a benthos biochemistry project. When I was on this icebreaker, I met a direct descendant of the Vikings, Sven Erik the Dane. And Sven Erik was actually investigating the position of seabirds in the relatively simple Arctic food web. Relatively simple. As the stomach content expert that I am, I know scientists have weird aspirations, I was very interested by this project, and so I got in contact with the supervisor of Svenerik, and I later ended up finding myself moving to Denmark to look at the diet of these seabirds. As I was working on investigating the diet of these seabirds, it quickly became apparent that there was something missing in this food web diagram. Plastic. 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 So when I started working on this project, there was another professor at the university who said, well, you know, if you do find some plastic in these birds, I would be interested in them. And guess what? I didn't find some plastic. I found a lot of plastic. Not just a little bit. Not just worth mentioning, hey, I found some plastic. No. It was worth initiating an entire, completely new project. Now, to be fair, not all seabirds actually had plastic in their stomach. And by that, I mean not all species of seabirds. In fact, there was one species of seabird that was specifically affected by that plastic ingestion. And that was the Northern Fulmar. The Northern Fulmar is part of the Procellaridae family. The Procellaridae family includes not only the Fulmars, but also the Albatross. That family, of which name I will avoid repeating again, Procellaridae, Procellaridae, is particularly vulnerable to plastic ingestion. And in fact, if you think about it, this makes sense, right? The pictures from Atoll Islands from Chris Jordan's were pictures of Albatross. The birds in which I found the most plastic were Fulmars. These two birds are from the same family. So why is this family most specifically affected by the ingestion of plastic? Well, it has to do mostly with their feeding strategy. If you look at the beak, for example, of a fulmar versus the beak of a thick bill myrrh, which is a different kind of bird from a different family, you will notice that the beak shape is completely different. The thick bill myrrh is very selective. They actually dive and they eat mostly fish. And you can see this in this beak that is very hydrodynamic and very elongated, even though it's called thick bill. The fulmar, on the other hand, just like the albatross, eats at the surface and they're very opportunistic, which means that they're not necessarily going to target a very specific kind of prey. That means that basically anything that floats is potential food, even whale poop. That's right, fulmars have been reported to eat whale poop. So the fact that fulmars or albatross are ready to eat pretty much anything that is floating makes them particularly vulnerable to eating plastic. In fact, it's such an established issue that scientists have actually started to use fulmars to estimate how much plastic there is in a given area. Now, there's some problems related to that method because, of course, you don't know when the fulmar ingested the plastic. And since fulmar do migrate, it could be that the plastic that you find in the stomach was actually ingested in a different location. But nonetheless, it actually still gives us some information to look at the type of plastic that is ingested by the fulmars. For example, scientists used to find a lot of pre-production plastic pellets in the stomach of fulmars. These little round beads that are also called mermaid tears are what is used by the industry to create any kind of plastic object. And believe it or not, since the 1980s, there's been a reduction of these plastic pellets in the stomach of fulmars. Really? Interesting. This reduction in plastic pellets in the stomach of fulmars reflects, most likely, the reduction in plastic pellets in the ocean. Now, why do we observe this reduction? Well, it's because there's been a lot of fuss around the industry losing these pellets in the ocean. 
during their manufacturing process, during the transportation process, and the industries have actually made an effort to try and reduce the loss of pellets to the environment. This raises a very interesting topic, is that we often blame the industry for what happens to the environment, but we, the users of these plastic items, are just as responsible. Whereas the industry clearly has made an effort to try and reduce the loss of plastic pellets to the oceans, consumers have not. And this is also reflected in Fulmar stomachs. Lots of consumer plastics, few industrial plastics. This is a really interesting example because people often feel helpless when it comes to doing something for the environment and they often blame the industry for what's going on. But when it comes to plastic or even garbage in general in the ocean, it is largely a consumer problem. So how does this affect the Fulmars? Well, at the moment, we don't really know. What we suspect is that having a huge load of plastic in the stomach is probably not a good thing, because the plastic doesn't give any energy or nutrients to the bird. What we're not really sure about is how long this plastic is staying in the system. So if it actually clogs the digestive system, then that can be really problematic. I can also tell you that at the moment, we don't really know how the plastic affects the birds from a chemical point of view. So there's a lot of really interesting questions surrounding this specific issue. I just realized that I completely forgot about my tea. At the moment, I will leave it at that. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one that will most likely be about plastic as well. Goodbye!